Welcome to I Know a Guy Bicycles, hanging out with a guy. Hey, I'm the guy, Justin. So I'm looking at truing stands. So truing stands is a vital tool for any bike mechanic, from novice to expert. And there's a plethora of different truing stands out there. Um, this is not a review of any specific truing stand. This is just kind of some insights of what do I really need? Um, because, you know, I'm not sponsored by any of these guys. I just use what is best for what I do day to day. And that's the testimonial in itself because, you know, if one of those things you're just doing and once in a while, it's one thing, but if you're doing a day to day, you want some little more sturdier, hardcore tool, right? Right tool for the job to make sure it's done right. So, um, Starting off, so you got your consumer style. This is an old school park uh, truing stand. And uh, this is basically <laughs> mounted to your bench or a two by four or whatever. Um, and they have the guides and adjustments on this, that kind of thing. So when you're, uh, let's go back up and go to the basic of the truing stand. What does it need? Well, it needs to hold the wheel in place and be able to check the guide or the guide on the rim. So up and down and also side to side. Um, then you gotta be able to figure out what you need to use to, uh, for those extra tools to actually true it, to dish it, and to check the temp and tension on the spokes. So there's several other tools that go with the tool. It's not just you get a truing stand and you're done. And heaven forbid, do not try to true your wheel up with one of these guys. You'll round out the spoke nipples, and you'll be able to drive yourself insane. Um, it's just one of those things where you're just gonna, oh boy, this is don't go there. Get the right tool for the job, especially when it comes to wheels, because you got dainty little spoke nipples, which are alloy, and if you don't use the right tool, they'll round out or break. So, you know, use the right stuff. So, so you gotta, you know, back up. You wanna have the wheel fixed in position and be able to you know, have a guide to determine if the rim is up and down or sideways. So um, with this particular truing stands, like the, you know, the beginner ones, we'll do all that. It, this one secures it from both side to side and you can adjust it. And that's why they have this little notch here. Um, also the notch on here, so you can determine the side to side and also up and down um, usage. Um, to true the wheel proper, you don't have to tire off of it. So, so you can actually adjust the up and down on it as well. So, you can get basic ones like this for home use. You only use it once or twice and throw it in the bucket and just it sits there until your next time use. That's fine. When I started out doing this for, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm a mechanic, but I had another job. And I'm doing that, but I'll work on stuff periodically. I went with this guy. This one is actually kind of a neat little concept. Um, yeah, it's a one-sider kind of deal. Um, it does the same concept, but you put the put the hub in here, and you tighten that down, and that gets your fixed plane, so it just holds it in place. And you gotta tighten it down quite a bit to get a lock in there. So, but you use your quickly skewer, tighten it up, then you adjust these to go out to the rim. And this one had an up and a down. So you can adjust it really fine tune. So you can, and a lot of times you go by sound if it rubs, so. You know, that scraper like, oh, then it backs off, and you scrape it, and it backs off. So those are the planes you're looking for, up and down, side to side, and the fixed position. So this turn Sam did great, and to do the dish, this one was really easy to understand a dish. The dish means where the rim is centered to the hub, you just flip it over. And then, then that'll determine your dish, because these are set positions, so you can see the gap. So to do the dish, you tighten or loosen one side, all now moves the rim over one way or another. So that's what I mean by dish. So the tools to use. So this one, you know, uses a spoke wrench. 
there's a couple different smoke wrenches out there to choose from. So uh, for a novice use, get a multi one. It can do different ones, so you don't have to buy six tools. But if you know, uh, most of the time, the parks um, red and blue one here fits about most. This is for, um, they're also numbered, 40, 42, and this one's worn off. I don't remember that one. This was kind of like your in between. So I have all these three just for your standard smoke nipples. And then, squeeze the reach. These are for the Mavic specialty tools to do the Mavic. Um, kind of like their nipples are a little bit bigger and they're kind of star shaped. So you have to use those. Um, also, uh, this holds the the bladed spoke in place while you're adjusting it so you're not tweaking the spoke on that. In addition to some internal hubs. Should have these all laid out, but I didn't. Some internal hubs, you don't see the nipples. You have to go from the inside to get them. That's this particular spoke wrench. And this is a nipple driver. So when you're building up wheels, that drives that nipple into the rim. Um, so you got those. And for some specialty um, hubs, like a through axle, um, it won't work on this true stand, but it will work on this one here for the two sides. This holds the, um, the th uh, through axle position. So you slide that in there and locks down and that holds that hub in place by a pressure point of holding that through axle. So you got those. Um, on top of all that, to do in a dish, another tool is um, this guy here, a dishing tool. So this is great for knobs. I use this one for years, so that's a good one to go with. But you know, if you have the funds, you want to get something more industrial, get the big old parks. You know, it's, it's known for industry standards. Most bike shops have them. And what the dishing tool is, is this little gauge here, and you go to the inside of the where the dropout meets the hub, and you measure it. And what you're looking for, if there's a gap, and if there's a gap on one side, then you need to move the rim over. So that's what this tool is used for, a dishing tool. Um, don't use it a lot. You can do the same thing by just flipping the wheel over to kind of just make sure these are fixed and you put it, flip it over and see. Um, but you know, that is a tool there. Then I, this is a tensioneometer. This thing checks the tension of the spokes and there's totally a lot of books on that showing where the flex is on the actual tension. So usually this is works on not bladed spokes as much as round, but you get the concept. You want them to be, you know, consistent throughout. So the truing wheels, there's a lot of little tools to go with just the truing stand itself. Um, if you have an old school one that doesn't do the big one, you have these adapters that get up to the 29ers. And also this is a disc guide. So if I had a disc on there, I can measure that. And there's also a disc tool rotor mount that's this guy to adjust that disc if you need to so it's perfectly vertical plane so it goes through that uh caliper brake caliper piston cleanly so now in a sense it's a pretty good plethora of tools here just to true the wheel so if you're looking at doing yourself you know this this is a great a great thing to have um, but if you're just doing it for novice, you can just do, use this. Just make sure you have an anchored plane so you're not fighting it on that. Or, and I believe they still sell similar ones of these. It could be even a knockoff, uh, but these work really well too. Um, what was really cool about these was um, this actually comes off the base mount. And this actually goes on top of the actual um, repair stand. So you got a two-in-one repair stand and you can throw your wheel up there and adjust that. But this has the, the bench um, plate. And in this one, you don't need a mount. Um, you can get away with not mounting, but it does have mounting holes so you can screw it into there. Um, you know, it's one of those things like, at my parents' shop, we had truing stands that were mounted to the bench. 
that was great. And then I worked at another shop. They just put a nice big piece of wood underneath it. And, and then that can be, the whole thing can be moved around. So you're not obstructing permanently a workspace like you do like with a vice or something. So if you need that extra room, you can move it around that kind of thing, which is nice. Um, so yeah, and there's all, you know, all these bits add up. I, I probably, even when, this is true and standard from the Parker bike days. So that gives you some idea. They last a long time. It's not something that wears out. Um, so this you know, bad boy is over 20 years old. Um, then I just added the accessories to modernize it and a better base. And uh, off the top of my head, I probably have mm, probably a couple hundred bucks just into this modifying this to be in a newer version and all that. So yeah, it can get pricey pretty quick. If you find like an old chewing stand and really there's not much left of the original except for the main base in here. So the guys got replaced to accommodate bigger tires and so forth. Um, these are extensions for the 29ers or, you know, bigger wheels, um, a disc rotor mount and the base. So, um, all those things, they, they do add up. Um, but you know, I geek out on tools and I wanted to redo this one because, you know, the, the newer ones, I mean, they're like three or four hundred bucks for like the top end ones. Um, I have not yet worked at a shop that had like the super high end where they had all like the gauges and pressure points and all that. I'm sure they're pretty cool. Um, but you know, <laughs> I've been chewing wheels for so long. Um, it's kind of like you just stick with what you know, I guess. Um, maybe one day I'll come across if I have extra funds to buy one of those, but I might find out it's just, you know, just not needed for what I do. Um, I'm sure there is a purpose for it, uh, for that higher end stuff, but this is about as high end as I need for what I do and it works great and solid and, you know, I can't, I can't complain whatsoever. Um, yeah, so that's my review on these particular tools. Um, yeah, just like you go to like the Mavic, you want to make sure you get the right ones. Uh, but there's a couple of different ones. Um, and also these here. So, you know, you know, all wheels or maybe they vary a little bit, but most of the time it's the red spoke wrench from Park Tool is like your go-to. If, if you have questions, you still are going to have a multi one anyway in that toolbox just because you come across as funky or weird or some neighborhood's kids bike from a department store, you know, needs, I don't know, it's just weird. You just want to tweak a spoke or two. Um, it's always good to have and they're not too expensive. The most expensive piece is going to be the actual truing stand. That's the investment lift on that. And once you get that, then you can add that to your little uh, tool collection to build out your shop, that kind of deal. So anywho, yeah, there's a hundred different ones out there. So I just wanted to give you an idea like, good, better, best situation and what I use. And when I started doing this garage stuff, I mean, this was doing me just fine. And then I just kind of built up from there. So, hey, if you like these videos, subscribe to my channel, go to my Facebook page, like my page there if you're a Facebooker. Um, also, you can go to my website, noguybicycle.com. Throw your email down for a mailing list there for blogs as well as products that I put out. So. Thanks for hanging out with me in the garage and until next time, have a great day.